All righty. Okay, so I have a really big update, guys. I'm going to go over everything that we saw today at Canada's Wonderland. Suri is sitting off to my right right now, and I'm trying not to laugh because this is the first time someone sat here and watched me record one of these videos. But I'm going to talk about everything new. I'm telling you right now that Canada's Wonderland had what I would call a major mini park entire renovation, okay? I'm gonna go over everything, and I'm gonna try and make this as quick as possible, but it's gonna be a long video, okay? So I apologize in advance, but this is gonna be the most detailed video about everything new you're gonna possibly find. So I'm gonna start off with a huge mistake of my own, is the front gate reno is not a expanded entrance. Um, they still have those expanded entrances outside the front, but you're gonna streamline in through those one, two doors. That's actually gonna be a new fast lane pickup area in those four windows that you just saw. The merch at Wonderland has improved. Honestly, I personally find it a little tacky, but um, I like the Behemoth ones really well. I do not like the Yukon or the Leviathan um, characters, but I will say it's an overall improvement, and I love the designs that they've been adding to the like windows in a lot of their merch stores. For example, what I mean by tacky is this Leviathan merch has Behemoth on it. That's all I'll say about that. This Yukon Striker looks like a wet bird <laughs> that just shook off all the water. Um, so I didn't personally love this myself. Um, and the Behemoth ones, again, were probably some of the coolest. That one reminded me of El Toro. And then look at that one. That one was sick. But I'll show... You know what? I was just about to say I'll show you the coolest one, and I don't think I showed you the coolest one. I think I walked away. Um, that one kind of reminded me of a pigeon. I don't ask me, but I didn't like that one either. Um, but maybe I'm just being a little, like, too harsh. But I, this Leviathan one, I hated. I hated so much. Like, look at it. Look at it. But let's get right into International Street. They added details. Like, I'm going to show you the buildings. This reminds me of Busch Gardens Williamsburg now. They added really nice details. They did the stucco, I think is the word for it, and then added some artistic paintings to the buildings. And the videos don't even do it justice. It really looks like a nice little Italian village now. The details everywhere on both sides are astronomical. Astronomical, I sound like that one TikToker, are so beautiful. Like, just pay attention to even above the candy shop. I love the attention to detail that they've applied to International Street, okay? Now, at Leviathan, they had a hype mic as well. So they had a hype mic that they would go and hype up the queue line with. Um, I thought it was really adorable. It really did create excitement. Um, and I'm super excited to see if that continues into the season. Um, because, honestly, it was really cute. Leviathan is also another ride that did receive a lot of painting, so the queue line area was um, overhauled, so uh, everything was repainted, uh, the, the stucco I think was also repainted, so that was really awesome to see, but even more importantly, significantly importantly, is the Leviathan trains. Their decals, the stickers, were redone, so they look really good. A lot of the seats um, were done, the seat cushions. Um, and the trains themselves had a lot of work done to them as well. In fact, train number one is getting completely redone. That is why it's not on the track right now. But if you look right there, it has a completely new chassis. And then what's the word for the wheel wells? Carriers. Carriers. It has all new carriers. <laughs> <laughs> Me reaching out to Surya for help. But the train looks stunning. And you can tell that they're putting a lot of work into it. But wait till I get to Dragonfire, guys. I have tea on Dragonfire. Wild Beast was down. Um, for those of you that watched my last update, it had valleyed. I'm not going to speculate on what happened. But I think with what we saw happen at El Toro and how they're walking the track from the start of the ride to where the train valleyed, we can make predictions of what happened. Um, I'm not going to touch on that. I'm just going to show you that they are working really hard to get Wild Beasts open um, and walking that track, looking for any damage or anything. Um, and I really trust Wonderland um, in my safety. Like I said, I am one of those hypochondriacs that fear death, like flying airplanes and all that. And I do not fear anything at Wonderland. But nonetheless, there are improvements everywhere. They've added this beautiful wooden fence to prevent guests from cutting across that little... Um, bush area that they planted last year. All right. I think I'm getting right into it. Planet Snoopy. Planet Snoopy received some paint throughout as well. It is extremely vibrant. Look at the stonework. I didn't even notice this. I didn't notice this while we were walking. They painted the stone. 
clowns on the bridge. It's so adorable. Oh my god. Wonderland really came out here and was just like, you know what? We're just going to do a complete overhaul of everything. Snoopy's Racing Railway is absolutely stunning. There's going to be a construction update that comes out probably like 20 minutes after this video that shows everything and talks about everything. But everything about Snoopy's is amazing. It is going to be, I think, like the crown jewel of Wonderland in terms of theming. Like, And after talking to some higher ups at the park, like this is definitely their crown jewel. They, they are really proud of this attraction and this area and what it's going to do for the kids area. It desperately needed a really high... Well, it's not a high capacity, but they really needed that big addition in the kids area. And this is that. And they really went all out. It gives me Dollywood vibes in person. You have to be there to understand it. The scale of the land that this entire project takes up is really impressive. It's got, and it looks like it's going to have theming. Like, because there's, like, you see these electrical poles coming up. That's definitely going to be the entrance sign. But they have them throughout the ride where there's turns. So I'm really curious to see what that ends up being because it honestly looks like they're putting a lot into this ride. And I love that. To see what Tundra Twister is going to potentially be off of the animation. And now seeing that everything they said about this ride in the animation and art is turning out to be true. Really excites me for the future of Wonderland and the 2025 edition. And even possibly what's going to come in 2024. If these park improvements continue into 2024, Wonderland is heading down a path to becoming that destination park in North America. Continuing on park improvements, Flying Canoes received some paint as well, and they are clearing out the um, what, what the pumps for the water jets on Whitewater Canyon. So if all goes well, the water jets on Whitewater Canyon could possibly be up and running this season after a long time of not being um workings caribou crossings is now a new snack and drink stand um, that will now serve these new snack options that sound amazing so they have zucchini sticks dill pickle coins samosas onion rings and kettle chips with sriracha mayo they also have a foot long um pogo and these craft beers this snack plan is continuing in other places around the park as well. They discontinued those horrible thin fries that we hated last season, and they've introduced waffle fries, guys, like Chick-fil-A. So Wonderland will now serve waffle fries, which is awesome. Here is another bar and snack um, area. So the drink stand over on International has now Street has now become a bar and snack stand. So that's awesome to see. Again, look at the roofing. They put a lot of attention to detail. Lazy Bear Lodge menu, essentially the same as last year, except the pork chops from Winterfest are now added. The pork chops are amazing and they have this beautiful sauce on top that really gives it flavor. Everything about the menu at Lazy Bear seemed slightly elevated from last season. So if you really like the food at Lazy Bear last season, you're gonna love it this season. I promise you that. The paint job on Vortex is amazing, okay? You cannot tell how amazing it is from the drone. I will say it is exactly the same as it was before. It's just nice. Like, it's just fresh, vibrant, no chips, no nothing. So it looks really good. Um, Would have loved to see a different color, but as you can see here, it still looks amazing. So I'm really impressed by the paint job on Vortex, and I can't wait to see what they do with Behemoth and other attractions at Canada's Wonderland. Again, if I had to make a prediction, I think Drop Tower is also becoming one of those attractions that need a paint job. Tundra Twister is definitely massive in person. When I tell you the drone does not do it justice, when you're standing there, you can see it pretty much from anywhere in the park. You see that top little portion sticking up everywhere? Um, I know Surya is super excited to ride it. Uh, he says it's probably going to be his number one ride in the park um, coming next season. He's over there laughing at me. Um, but here's another backdrop to a merch store. So that is what I was talking about. There is one negative, I will say, but it makes sense as to why they had to do this. They removed all the pine trees around Swings of the Century. We all know, for those of you that have been going to the park for the last 10 years, these pine trees have had a tendency to fall on the ride or cause a scene whenever there's a windstorm. So it made sense that they removed them, but unfortunately it has created somewhat of this little eyesore of a, <laughs> of a little surrounding to what used to be a beautiful setting, I think, for the Swings of the Century. But I won't fret because I trust in Wonderland, especially after what I've seen this season, to fix up that area and really do some nice landscaping to make it look pretty. 
Clockworks' paint job and overall refurbishment to its parts, because it's a ride that runs in during Winterfest, is looking amazing. So they put some money and TLC into Clockworks, okay? Let me tell you, the drink cups are also back at Canada's Wonderland. <gasps> There's so much to cover, I'm almost out of breath. <laughs> the Super Soaker is well on its way through its reconstruction project. Um, as you can see, a little portion of those yellow lift sides are burnt still, but they'll fix that. They are overhauling Riptide galore. So they have these new water pistons on there and completely new restraints. And I know they're new because the old ugly ones are in behind Riptide, um, which I should show you in a second. So these beautiful all black look looks really sleek on a Riptide. It was amazing. Honestly, I'm really excited to see um, this ride in action and see what this new um, maybe waterproof material does. I have some really good news for the uh, Dragonfire lovers here. I can confirm that Dragonfire probably isn't going anywhere anytime soon because it seems to have received a complete overhaul. They seem to have put the Vortex trains from King's Island to use and rebuilt the train for Dragonfire or trains and the brakes on Dragonfire and the lift hill all seem to be new parts. The ride makes absolutely no noise leaving the station now and the brakes make next to no noise when you come in. When the brakes let go, you barely notice and you slowly slide. When the brakes clamp on you as you come in, it is smooth as silk. I honestly have a controversial opinion to say and that is that Dragonfire is now officially smoother of a ride than Behemoth. It honestly is so close to Tennessee Tornado at Dollywood. Not quite there, but very close to smoothness, um, in my opinion. I know that's controversial. Overall, the park has received some major upgrades, um, especially when it comes to paint all over. And I'm super excited to see the future of Canada's Wonderland because this park is receiving such a massive budget out of Cedar Fair, and it's only going to continue. Stay tuned to the podcast tonight at 8 p.m., guys. We have so much to cover and talk about. Thank you so much for watching today's video. See you in the construction update and podcast tonight at 8. Have a good one. Bye.